evening viewers to the CEC Gurukul. I am Shankar Kumar. I teach history at Hindu College in Delhi University in the Department of History. And uh, today uh, we are here to talk about the second stage in the course of the French Revolution. Uh, in my earlier interaction with you, I have spoken to you about the beginning of the French Revolution, the nature, the historiography uh, around uh, the revolution and uh, in my previous interaction I had spoken to you about the first stage of the revolution. Uh, we are covering the entire course of the revolution and in the first stage we covered from uh, the period around 1789 to 1792. And our today's timeline is uh, 1792 to around 1794, and uh, this is to the to the you can say middle of 1794. And uh, if you can recall, uh, we had spoken of the fact that the first phase of the Fr uh, of the French Revolution uh, is. Uh, uh, somewhat dominated uh, by the uh, upper echelons or, or the top echelons of the third state and uh, it is the dominant order which uh, is calling shots uh, in the first stage and uh, uh, the political structure so to say uh, remains unchanged in the sense that uh, technically France continued to be monarchy in the first stage uh, although the monarch uh, Louis XVI was almost uh, a puppet uh, kind of a thing uh, uh, in the in the first uh, couple of uh, years of the revolution. Uh, he was almost uh, a prisoner. Uh, he was uh, he had uh, done extensive damage to his uh, reputation as a monarch. Uh, the entire uh, steam, the social steam that monarchy enjoyed, had uh, had. Uh, had been demolished on account of uh, quite a few things that uh, is accorded to his own personal weaknesses and certainly uh, a majority of it uh, on account of the circumstances uh, that characterize the revolution. Uh, we shall be talking about it, but to begin with let us understand that uh, our timeline is 1792 to the middle of 1794 and the second stage of the uh, French revolution as you can see on your slide. Uh, is uh, uh, is uh, uh, marking the triumph uh, or the triumphant uh, uh, dominant order uh, that had characterized the first revolution that is uh, that is replaced and uh, the people who are replacing uh, the the uh, dominant order is uh, uh, is is uh, or um, in fact they are the radical republicans they are referred to as uh, republicans because it is in this stage that we find that France uh, declares itself formally as a republic. Uh, even uh, the king uh, Louis XVI is, uh, uh, is executed. Uh, several other leaders who were the iconic leaders of the revolution also f met the same fate on account of the radicalization uh, of uh, French revolution in this phase. And that is why in the historiography uh, it also earns the uh, epithet of uh, the reign of terror. So, uh, in this phase uh, the, the political leadership uh, is in the hands of uh, a 12 membered committee called the committee of public safety. We shall see in detail as to how it comes up under what circumstances and uh, what uh, what all uh, political recourses uh, it, it takes and uh, all the uh, all the uh, high uh, you know uh, you can say ideals of uh, fraternity uh, liberty uh, equality egalitarianism etc that had characterized with, with which the revolution had begun and uh, th those lofty ideas uh, and uh, ideals of the revolution that were shaped by the enlightenment ideals uh, to begin with had attracted quite a few uh, quite a few admirers and supporters uh, from even outside france 
for example, William Wordsworth to begin with was very sympathetic uh, to the to the cause of the revolution. But very soon, by the time we reach the beginning of the second stage, which was uh, characterized by the radicalization or uh, uh, coming of the reign of terror, by that time we find that uh, most of these uh, early sympathizers, the thinkers, the writers, and so forth, even uh, from uh, outside France. They were somewhat disenchanted with the sequence of uh, things uh, that that uh, started characterizing the revolution. Edmund Burke, um, the noted uh, um, British uh, parliamentarian and uh, also uh, journalist, so to say, or um, who who has. Uh, uh, penned down uh, the one of the best sellers of the time reflections on the french revolution written around 1790 much before the beginning of the uh, reign of terror had uh, almost graphically anticipated uh, the radicalization to happen and uh, therefore if you if you read uh, uh, his work uh, reflections uh, it it would appear that uh, he had uh, seen those uh, uh, those uh, uh, things associated with uh, the French Revolution or the reign of terror uh, had been witnessed by him. The fact of the matter that he was uh, logically arriving at those uh, graphic uh, details which he had never seen. He was writing uh, two years prior to the beginning of the reign of terror. And uh, so, uh, the point that I am trying to make is that uh, the lofty ideals uh, with which the revolution had uh, begun and uh, which characterized uh, the revolution in the first phase uh, had fallen flat and uh, these two years uh, in the second stage represents uh, uh, a very bloody phase of uh, the revolution. Uh, the entire uh, uh, galaxy of uh, leaders, the entire battery of leaders with which the revolution had begun had almost been gulletined uh, by uh, by the revolutionaries uh, in this stage this is this is the stage when uh, the uh, more radical and egalitarian minded uh, jacobins uh, are uh, are very much uh, politically active and uh, they had replaced uh, the girondins uh, who uh, earlier uh, were active during the first phase and were uh, somewhat uh, uh, more uh, conservative as compared to uh, the radical Jacobins. Uh, this is uh, second stage is the phase of the sans culottes, um, and uh, there is uh, a very, you can say, uh, overt and conscious display of anti uh, aristocratic uh, uh, cultural traits, stance. Uh, several behaviors, social behaviors, uh, which uh, were regarded as aristocratic behavior or which even carried a twinge of aristocracy, uh, were looked down upon, were, were almost banned and uh, uh, anyone who uh, displayed a little bit of sympathy uh, for the cause of the aristocracy uh, uh, were uh, looked down with fair degree of suspicion, they were charged of uh, treasury. Uh, uh, treachery and uh, uh, this was the charge that was leveled against quite a few uh, uh, leaders uh, who uh, who were not actually arguing against uh, the revolution but uh, merely were uh, uh, maybe representing some stance that was somewhat soft or not as hard as the jacobins would have wanted them to be and uh, that was enough uh, to arrest them under the law of suspects and uh, get them gulletined uh, without giving them fair trial. So, uh, in, a, in a sense, uh, if you look at the historiography of the French Revolution, the critics uh, of uh, the revolution, for example, when uh, 200 years uh, of French uh, Revolution was being celebrated, uh, the British uh, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher had uh, such a caustic remark to, made, uh, to, to make uh, of, of uh, the French Revolution on account of this phase, that is the reign of terror. And uh, she emphasized that uh, uh, the claims that uh, the French leadership uh, in uh, 1989 is making uh, uh, as a result of the French Revolution as, as the birthplace of uh, quite a few uh, things like liberty, democracy, human rights and so forth 
she, she uh, reminded the world that uh, French Revolution was not only about that, French Revolution was also about the reign of terror where uh, uh, these principles were completely uh, uh, looked away and uh, they, they, it, it marked a departure from the principles with which the revolution had begun and it was some kind of a blot uh, on the, on the uh, history of uh, the revolution itself uh, and uh, the number of people who were killed uh, without giving them fair trial and so forth. So, uh, so that, is, that is how or this is what uh, we are going to talk about today. Uh, the, the second phase of the revolution. Also, uh, uh, let us be mindful of the fact that uh, this is also the time when France goes to war with the uh, neighboring uh, European countries and it is in the name of exigencies of uh, war like situation uh, or France being at war that uh, these uh, uh, um, issues of liberty um, and uh, other uh, privileges uh, with which a usual citizen should have lived, they were taken away. Uh, so, it was uh, taken away in the name of war, but it, it, it uh, somewhat continued for a longer period of time, even, even when France had started winning wars uh, against uh, its uh, uh, neighbors. Even then, uh, although uh, there was no excuse uh, for France to have continued with these ra radical measures, yet France did continue with uh, these radical measures and uh, this uh, also led to escalation of, uh, uh, you can say, uh, counter-revolutionary sensibilities in France. Uh, and uh, strains of uh, counter-revolutionary sensibilities can be traced in France even today. Uh, people abide by uh, the, the principles with which uh, the counter-revolutionary uh, uh, movement uh, had begun. So, uh, the point is that when we are looking at the course and content of the French Revolution, uh, we should uh, not uh, blind ourselves uh, with uh, any one of the stages. In fact, all these stages uh, gave uh, a particular character. Uh, to the revolution, uh, they uh, added to the substance of uh, the revolution and uh, if there were positives, there were negatives as well and uh, that is what it was all about. So, uh, uh, zeroing down to uh, some of the uh, some of the essential features of uh, the second stage, one of course, as you can see on your slide that the moderate leaders of the uh, first phase. Uh, are increasingly replaced by the radical republicans and when we say radical republicans, uh, please keep in mind uh, the Jacobins uh, and uh, when we say moderate, uh, you can keep in mind the uh, Girondins. So, Girondins are giving way to Jacobins, although uh, there are, uh, 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 there is a political outfit. Uh, not entirely party like, but uh, since they sat on some elevated portion of the parliament of the uh, national assembly, therefore, uh, these people were also called uh, mountains and they are the ones who uh, are in the leadership with uh, a very solid backing uh, uh, of uh, the Jacobins and uh, that is how it goes. Uh, so, uh, what brought about uh, uh, this uh, transformation from uh, uh, from uh, somewhat uh, a liberal steady movement of the revolution to uh, very sudden and uh, radical uh, departure that it marked with past. So, uh, when we ponder over this question, uh, basically there are three reasons that are cited uh, as you can see on your slide. Number one, uh, disillusionment uh, amongst the politically literate lower classes as they perceived that the revolution was not benefiting them. Lack of their effective voice in the operation of the new constitution was something which was troubling them. And uh, this is because uh, uh, in the earlier uh, lecture, I have uh, spoken to you about the fact that even before the beginning of the French revolution. Uh, the Frenchmen had come to fashion their self-image uh, in terms of uh, being a citizen. So, even when they were uh, part of monarchy, 
uh, it is on account of the permeation of the uh, enlightened ideas uh, and uh, political consciousness on account of the uh, on account of the popularities of uh, you can say saloons where uh, these things were discussed um, coffee houses where people sat and uh, discussed about political issues and public uh, public uh, issues and so forth they uh, at times were even uh, sponsored by uh, the royal ladies or the aristocratic ladies and so uh, this uh, political uh, literacy uh, even amongst the lower order of uh, France was very much uh, perceivable and uh, in the earlier lecture I have also given you the figures with respect to the number of pamphlets that were published uh, in the year prior to uh, the beginning of the French Revolution and that also goes on to, uh, goes on to exhibit the political awareness of the uh, French people, uh, even the lower classes uh, were politically very uh, aware of what was going around them and uh, it is they who uh, created the uh, situations uh, for the monarch uh, which became very difficult uh, for him to come out of and at times uh, Louis XVI landed himself in uh, pitiable condition. Uh, there was that march from Paris to Versailles where the uh, uh, monarch was uh, uh, virtually uh, dragged alongside the crowd uh, walking back from Versailles to Paris again uh, with wheat, uh, sacks of wheat and uh, bread and so forth which were the consumption items of the uh, daily use uh, by the uh, lower order and uh, the lower order uh, basically was uh, concerned uh, about uh, the uh, bringing down of the essential item prices particularly bread which they consumed daily and uh, in the first couple of years that is in the first stage of the French Revolution uh, there was very little impact uh, that was made to the prices of bread and uh, whatever participation uh, that they did, uh, the lower order did uh, in political consequential terms, uh, this idea was dawning on them that uh, this is not benefiting them despite their uh, overwhelming participation. They are the people on the streets who are clamoring for change, they are the ones who are creating a difficult situation for the monarchy and uh, that is where the concessions are coming from. But when it comes to constitutional changes. Uh, be it uh, the uh, political structures or even the specific clauses, basically uh, the first stage was about uh, free market, about uh, the upper bourgeoisie, about the rule of law, was about uh, uh, honoring uh, the contractual clauses. So, it was uh, Adam Smithian uh, uh, ideas uh, which was uh, which was given uh, a f kind of uh, political uh, space uh, to to be played out and uh, the lower order somewhat felt that uh, their issues are not reflected uh, in the in the constitutional changes that were made uh, by the national assembly and the focus and shine uh, was uh, basically uh, for the upper echelon of the uh, third state, the upper bourgeoisie uh, and uh, therefore, uh, the people on the street, the uh, petty shopkeepers, the, uh, the uh, printers and, and uh, people who are engaged in not so uh, highly paid jobs, they are the ones who are uh, clamoring for change, they are the ones who want the revolution to take uh, a rather radical uh, uh, proportion and start uh, impacting their life by bringing down the prices of bread and so forth. Similarly, the uh, deputies who were elected uh, to uh, represent them, represent the uh, uh, French nationals and given their number, uh, traditionally uh, the lower order uh, was uh, the most in terms of number and uh, the deputies who were elected uh, to the National Assembly, uh, they, they, if you look at their social profile. Uh, there is some kind of a mismatch. They were coming from the third state all right, but uh, they were not from the lower ranks of the third order 
uh, and uh, basically they were professionals, they were uh, traders, they were uh, lawyers and uh, that is not uh, the kind of social constituency that we are talking about here. We are talking about uh, a more radicalized people uh, uh, down at the lowest uh, rung of the third state who are feeling uh, um, disillusioned and disenchanted. And uh, so that is uh, one of the reasons as to why uh, you can say that is the social uh, backdrop in which uh, uh, these changes uh, towards radicalization happens uh, making transition from the first to second stage. Second reason, uh, as you can uh, uh, look at the slide, uh, Louis XVI, uh, I told you that uh, even before uh, the beginning of the second stage, uh, he was uh, hardly a king uh, in operation because uh, he, he has uh, done considerable damage to his reputation as a king. Uh, he was collaborating with uh, the revolutionaries yet vacillating uh, a lot and uh, that meant that uh, he was collaborating only under distress. He was made to do quite a few things and sign quite a few documents uh, much to his personal distaste. Uh, he was uh, assisted uh, towards the beginning of the French Revolution by uh, a person of the aristocratic background Mirabu. And uh, Mirabu, uh, on account of his uh, aristocratic uh, background, was not liked by the uh, uh, radicals. And uh, uh, in 1791, he died as well. And uh, Louis XVI was virtually left uh, with no one to bank uh, on. And uh, so Mirabu's death and uh, Mirabu's perception also uh, rubbed into the reputation of Louis XVI. But uh, over and beyond uh, these things, uh, we already are aware of the fact that by this time, by 1792, uh, uh, Louis XVI had uh, even uh, uh, tried to leave France in disguise and uh, he was uh, caught uh, or in fact he was recognized. Uh, as uh, the monarch and the story goes that uh, the new paper currency Asigna that was launched did carry his uh, image and it is as a consequence of seeing his image that uh, a person, uh, an ordinary person uh, could uh, even visualize to what uh, their monarch uh, looks like and uh, he uh, caught hold of uh, uh, him and he was uh, virtually taken as a prisoner, brought back and ever since was held uh, as captive. So, uh, technically even at this point of time, uh, France was not a republic, but uh, it was, uh, it was uh, a monarchy, but uh, it was the National Assembly which was calling shots with the upper bourgeoisie uh, in political prominence. So, uh, we, we see that uh, uh, apart from the uh, disenchantment of uh, the lower order, it is the uh, personal weakness and vacillating uh, nature of the monarch Louis XVI uh, also that added to uh, the perception that not everything was right uh, so far as uh, the uh, course and content of the revolution is concerned. People were uh, go growing restive. Uh, please remember that uh, uh, the charm of uh, monarchy with the kind of invested faith in the monarch uh, and the trust that is reposed on this uh, position was something that was uh, continuing for centuries uh, in uh, French history and uh, uh, for a monarch to have dented that image by trying to flee France uh, at the behest of the emigres, at the behest of uh, those who were uh, clamoring for counter-revolution, uh, the aristocratic backlash, um, despite the fact that uh, uh, even under uh, Duras, uh, the monarch uh, was collaborating with the revolutionaries. So, it was uh, becoming very clear that uh, uh, he is just there, um, uh, much to uh, his personal distaste, um, he has to lead France. The fact of the matter is that he uh, was feeling uh, uh, insecure and uh, was trying to uh, fend for himself, was trying to uh, get a escape route for himself and his family 
and uh, with such a monarch uh, uh, a nation could not be led into the future. So, this uh, added uh, as one of the uh, reasons as to why uh, France had to uh, or France uh, witnessed radicalization of the movement. Uh, third um, and uh, very important is uh, uh, as you can see on your slide, uh, France uh, enters into war with its uh, European neighbors. Uh, this is towards the middle of 1792 and that is where the uh, second phase begins uh, and uh, that is where uh, the radicalization happens, uh, that is where the Jacobins uh, assume uh, central uh, you can say space uh, in, in uh, political uh, arena and uh, that is where uh, Girondins uh, are on vain and uh, radicalization of the movement happens. I have also referred to this earlier that uh, uh, war is used as the pretext uh, for taking away uh, quite a few uh, uh, quite a few rights and liberties uh, of a normal citizen uh, and there is a slew of measures that are authoritarian and uh, it, it is a departure from the lofty liberal ideals with which the revolution had begun. Uh, we shall be uh, looking at uh, them uh, as to uh, what were the details, uh, the pith and substance of these authoritarian measures and the institutions, the offices through which um, this was carried out. Uh, to begin with, uh, we are trying to uh, understand uh, the uh, ways and means by which uh, the radicalization has happened. Uh, in the second stage. Uh, one thing that we should keep in mind is that this is the time when National Assembly uh, makes way to National Convention uh, and National Convention is something uh, which goes on to become the effective governing body of the country for the next three years or so, uh, all through the uh, reign of terror, all through the second uh, radical republican phase. Uh, now, National Assembly all of us know, we have spoken about it. but. Uh, um, uh, on the basis of universal suffrage, uh, a national convention uh, was elected uh, and uh, this national convention, the mandate of this national convention was to make a new constitution for, uh, for France, which of course the government uh, never implemented because of the war situation. Uh, and uh, but it is the national convention uh, which is in power. So. Uh, there is a technical change here. Uh, National Assembly uh, taking the uh, form of National Convention with the mandate to make the uh, new constitution and it is uh, in the National Convention that we have institutions or offices like uh, uh, the uh, Committee of Public Safety and so forth, which, which were uh, very instrumental in carrying out uh, excesses or authoritarian uh, uh, which, which, which uh, uh, worked out and uh, implemented the authoritarian measures. Uh, uh, now, 1792, 21st September, uh, France declares itself as a republic and uh, the monarch uh, Louis XVI. Uh, very quickly was dispensed with 1793 January, he is executed, he is guillotined to, uh, to death and uh, uh, it is the committee of public safety which is created uh, by the national convention which is uh, essentially a 12 membered committee where uh, it is the Jacobins who held sway and uh, they are the ones uh, who uh, are known for uh, although they justified their actions uh, in terms of uh, the ideals of uh, Rousseau uh, and uh, the general will and so forth, but on the ground the, the, the way the politics played out, it was uh, virtual uh, abandonment of liberal ideas and uh, it was all around uh, a very authoritarian uh, kind of regime that was at work. And uh, any uh, revolutionary who was, uh, who was not seen or perceived to be radical enough, who was seen to be going soft uh, or who was uh, displaying uh, any degree of ambivalence with respect to what they were supposed to be doing, 
they were uh, arrested uh, and uh, there was another law of suspect uh, that was passed and uh, this law enabled the committee of public safety to uh, to uh, arrest such people who are displaying uh, not so radical or who are displaying some sympathetic behavior uh, or uh, in the form of uh, writings or conduct uh, for the uh, aristocracy or uh, for the uh, counter revolutionaries uh, and uh, that was uh, a ground good enough uh, to uh, arrest them not give them fair trial and uh, very quickly uh, execute them uh, uh, by that dreaded instrument uh, that Dr. Gulitin uh, devised in the name of reason to give a very swift and painless death. So, that element of reason um, uh, sarcastically is at play, but uh, uh, what it is leading to is uh, uh, highly uh, not liberal uh, and very authoritarian. And uh, these are some of the uh, some of the measures uh, that were undertaken uh, during this phase, as you can see on your slide. The law of the maximum. Now, what is this law of the maximum? Law of the maximum is again uh, implemented uh, uh, during this phase uh, on account of the pressure uh, generated by the uh, Jacobins, the people in the streets, the Sansculottes, and so forth, who are uh, who are clamoring for this kind of a uh, uh, socialist uh, legislation, which empowers the government to set the. Uh, set the maximum price. So, it is it's just like uh, present day's MRP. You cannot uh, sell the traders, the shopkeepers, the re retailers cannot sell a product uh, over and beyond the uh, maximum uh, stated price on that product. And obviously, the demand for this was uh, the lower order uh, was, was coming from the lower order. They were the social constituency uh, behind this. And uh, it, it uh, ensured that uh, the uh, bread prices or uh, at least uh, articles of uh, everyday use or essential commodities, uh, their prices do not uh, go very high. So, that, that tinge of uh, socialism, uh, so to say, uh, is very much discernible during this phase uh, of the revolution, during the second uh, phase of the revolution. Then the law of suspects I have already discussed that uh, this was implemented uh, with the intent uh, to uh, purge France uh, from anyone betraying any sympathy uh, to the aristocrats or to the uh, emigres who were seen as fomenting uh, some kind of a trouble at home. Uh, some kind of a civil war uh, at home who were uh, who were uh, igniting what uh, we know as counter revolutionary uh, tendencies in france and therefore the revolutionaries in the name of general will uh, wanted uh, uh, that uh, france should stay strong and for that uh, they needed these kinds of uh, uh, temporary measures because france was at war uh, to uh, to uh, purge France from uh, such uh, elements, uh, but if you really look at the way in which it played out, it ended up gobbling up uh, the entire battery of leadership that the revolution itself had created. Some of the revered leaders like Robespierre, Danton, Marat, they were all uh, killed uh, during this phase. Uh, and the uh, law of suspects uh, you know, became a uh, dreaded uh, anti-democratic, anti-liberal kind of provision uh, that was uh, allowed a full play during this uh, period. Similarly, conscription, which is uh, like um, compulsory service uh, to the French army and uh, adults, uh, male adults uh, uh, did not have a choice, but they had to compulsorily serve in the army for a specified number of years and uh, this was all in the name of France being at war. Uh, but as I told you that uh, despite the initial setbacks that the French army, newly created French army had been uh, had received, even when they had started winning, uh, these measures did continue, the, these measures uh, were not seized. 
and uh, that is something that brought a uh, lot of uh, uh, lot of uh, bad reputation to to the regime uh, in the second stage and uh, moving on from here uh, if you, if you look at the overall flavor uh, even in the domain of culture uh, or uh, sartorial aspects uh, or other visible symbols uh, then uh, sanskrutis uh, dress uh, where uh, they consciously uh, did not uh, wear those uh, knee uh, length uh, trousers that usually were worn by uh, the uh, aristocrats so that sense of uh, anti aristocracy is uh, is uh, not only the uh, is woven not only in the political ideology but uh, they are uh, culturally made visible and uh, that made uh, uh, French Revolution very, uh, very, uh, you can say, direct and uh, crass kind of uh, uh, display. So uh, uh, there were several uh, uh, traditional uh, behavioral codes which were seen as anti-aristocratic uh, cultural gestures. For example, uh, it was. Uh, it was a, a common place uh, in France uh, at around this point of time uh, to see uh, that if uh, a lady is traveling and uh, there is a male uh, in the same carriage or in the same uh, uh, in the same uh, uh, whatever that they are traveling in uh, then uh, the male would go ask for the hands of uh, the uh, lady and uh, kiss her and uh, this was uh, to give uh, a sense of company uh, to the lady and uh, this kind of uh, behavior uh, which was uh, so uh, commonplace in France was labeled as, an, uh, as a, a very aristocratic behavior. And uh, this is something that was looked down upon. So there was a conscious attempt to do away with uh, such uh, uh, such uh, cultural gestures. Uh, so that element of anti aristocracy is uh, is uh, very visible uh, in the uh, not only dress but uh, other uh, cultural attributes with which Sanskritus is identified. And in the second stage, they were given um, a full play. Similarly, uh, we are talking in the realm of uh, culture and uh, therefore, let us talk of religion as well. Uh, now, traditional ways in which uh, uh, the French people worshipped God, uh, the, uh, the uh, Catholic ways uh, in which uh, worshipping was done, uh, we have the uh, Cathedral of Notre Dame, uh, which was uh, a central place uh, which held a central place uh, in the uh, religious uh, sensibilities of uh, France, uh, you have a new system of worshipping uh, that could be seen uh, and uh, in the uh, cathedral uh, as part of worshipping uh, a mountain was raised, uh, this is all artificially done. And this mountain uh, symbolized the power of the mountain, the political group. Uh, we have already spoken of the Girondins, the mountains and uh, uh, the uh, Jacobins. So, uh, since they were in power, so uh, even in the realm of religion, they are symbolized by, uh, physically symbolized by that. And on the top of the mountain, there was a temple uh, that was erected uh, and uh, from that temple, uh, uh, and uh, beneath that, uh, there was a uh, there was a logo written uh, to uh, to philosophy. So it was all in the name of reason, and uh, there is hardly any uh, any religiosity associated with it. So religion is also sought to be woven uh, in the in the uh, grammar of reason, uh, which uh, which did not last long, and uh, I think. Uh, there is a limit to which uh, reason can be applied uh, to, to the domain of uh, religiosity and religious behavior and that is the takeaway from uh, this instance uh, in the uh, second phase of the French Revolution. So, from that temple a lady 
who is dressed as uh, liberty she is the one who descend and uh, there are worshippers all around that mountain and once she would descend uh, she would ask for uh, uh, contributions and people would give uh, some contributions to her and uh, she would again uh, go back and th that's how that's how uh, religious uh, religiosity was uh, uh, was uh, reshaped or you can say restructured sought to be restructured it did not last long uh, by the time we have napoleon back uh, uh, in the uh, helm of affairs of france uh, we have uh, uh, Napoleon uh, approaching the church and uh, working out a, con uh, a concordat with uh, the Pope and uh, things were uh, settled. But uh, in these uh, turbulent uh, period in between, uh, there was uh, this kind of experiment done. Similarly, uh, there were several other things like uh, the, uh, the uh, names of months were uh, changed uh, from the uh, English calendar to French calendar uh, and uh, French names uh, were used. They were all drawn from the agrarian cycle of uh, France. Uh, so, nature uh, came in for a fair degree of uh, focused treatment. Uh, so, uh, uh, names of months would be uh, like thermidor, uh, fructose. And so, so uh, it, it's like a, uh, a gradient cycle. The uh, season of ripening of uh, fruits, the season of uh, uh, flowers blossoming, and so forth. So they were used as uh, as a new nomenclature for uh, the month's name. Again, uh, these things also did not last long and. Uh, it uh, it uh, created a lot of uh, sarcastic uh, it invited a lot of sarcastic remarks from uh, other countrymen uh, that uh, this is how uh, the french revolution has come to treat uh, tradition and uh, culture and uh, that's the experiment that they are doing similarly uh, 365 days of uh, the year is uh, rearranged because uh, of the leap year uh, and so that issue was, is resolved all in the name of reason uh, and uh, the leftover days uh, the six hours in four uh, years would be celebrated as uh, another festival again in the name of reason and so forth. So, uh, it is like uh, the uh, inconsistency of uh, the tradition uh, from the prism of reason is something that is uh, very important for the radical uh, revolutionaries and they are uh, attempting to make changes even in these domains uh, which were part of collective behavior and uh, there were a lot of sensibilities associated with it. The church uh, and this is uh, important, uh, the church uh, which was uh, 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 which had a fair degree of uh, sensibilities. Uh, even amongst the peasantry and so forth, uh, when uh, attempts were made to secularize uh, church, church officials, their elections, uh, their oath taking, not in the name of God, but in the name of state uh, and so forth, the peasantry uh, and this is uh, evident in the Vendi revolt uh, uh, in this phase. The peasantry is uh, not very happy, although uh, in terms of class interest, the peasantry should have sided with the revolutionaries, but uh, that is the way uh, things are complex, uh, that uh, uh, religion, religiosity, uh, charm of monarchy, they, they, ha they showed fair degree of uh, resilience. Uh, amongst uh, Frenchmen and uh, it was a kind of complex uh, reaction uh, that is displayed. So, it is not as if every, every section of the society was uh, convinced by the revolutionaries and they were siding with them. So, it, it, it was a very complex interplay of uh, uh, contrasting sensibilities, some captured by the revolutionaries, some captured by the counter revolutionaries and some going astray. So, uh, that is, that is uh, what uh, adds variety and heterogeneity to the character and substance of the uh, French Revolution. Also associated with this uh, uh, second stage is the reversal of trend of uh, decentralization. 
So, this is the time when uh, uh, central agencies and central appointed uh, center appointed uh, officials uh, are uh, sent to the provinces or departments as they called uh, in France and uh, the initial uh, uh, ideals with which the revolution had begun, uh, it was all uh, uh, imagery of a decentralized France. It was a federal France that the revolutionaries uh, had uh, originally envisaged for uh, French future. But uh, by the time uh, we reach the second stage, we find that uh, the exigency of war and the Jacobins being uh, at the helm and uh, uh, the kind of uh, impulse for centralization that they displayed was so acute that uh, the initial uh, ideals of decentralization is lost and France ended up uh, being a very centralized state. So, uh, there are uh, uh, officials and uh, practices that went against uh, the uh, federal or uh, um, uh, decentralized France with which uh, the revolution had begun. Similarly, uh, the pace of industrial transformation also, th these are all in terms of consequences. So, uh, law of maximum and several other, uh, you can say, uh, socialist measures uh, that were undertaken uh, by the Committee of Public Safety. Uh, so, all these things uh, cut into the zeal of the entrepreneurs or the bourgeoisie uh, who were, uh, uh, who were uh, also, uh, also uh, you can say participant in the industrialization of France. Please remember that this is also, these are also the critical decades, uh, these are also the critical decades where uh, England uh, is uh, overtaking France uh, in terms of taking early lead uh, in the process of industrialization. But as a result of uh, these two, three years of, uh, of Jacobins being at par and reversal of the policies, economic policies from uh, open market, laissez faire and uh, liberal principles and contractual uh, uh, commitments and so forth, that uh, socialist uh, uh, tinge uh, and controlling prices uh, somewhat uh, historians regard that uh, they could have been factors in inhibiting the pace of uh, industrial uh, transformation and uh, so uh, the committee uh, could be held responsible for uh, pro poor uh, economic policies uh, much to the disadvantage of the uh, uh, of the bourgeoisie or uh, entrepreneurs who wanted to uh, quicken the pace of industrial transformation of uh, france Similarly, uh, in terms of the positives, uh, 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 since we are talking about the consequences, uh, if you look at uh, a new nation being born, a new republic being born with all its uh, paraphernalia, with all its uh, apparatus of the state in form of army, police, uh, revenue system and so forth, uh, ruthless pursuit of domestic and foreign policies uh, did foster a sense of nationality among the French and that is evident in their national uh, song as well and uh, the, um, the, uh, the uh, you can say uh, uh, the soul of a new nation uh, found articulation through several measures. And uh, uh, there is a clarity in terms of uh, what France st stood for and what was antithetical to French interest. And uh, that uh, credit can be given to uh, the uh, second phase leaders or the way things uh, panned out in the second phase that it uh, accorded uh, some sense of uh, prioritizing. It, it, uh, it prioritized uh, as to uh, what could be good for uh, a nation uh, in its infancy and uh, that did foster a positive sense of uh, nationality uh, among the French and uh, thereby uh, it, uh, it strengthened uh, a new nation, a new republic. Uh, through uh, through these policies, so uh, they were ruthless. They they were at the cost of uh, liberty, uh, individual rights, and so forth. But it was short-lived in the name of war. Uh, as a result of uh, war exigencies, 
but uh, this you can say is an inadvertent uh, consequence uh, of uh, all these measures that the sense of nationality uh, drew uh, new uh, roots uh, in uh, French uh, politics. And so that is it uh, uh, dear friends about uh, the French revolution in the second phase and when we meet next we shall be uh, talking about uh, the uh, next phase of the revolution and uh, that is the third phase uh, which is also known as the directory phase uh, of, uh, of the uh, revolution or you can say Thermidorian reaction. Uh, so these are different nomenclatures used for the uh, third stage. So, uh, that is it about the second stage of the French Revolution.